Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to DevConf. Uh, and we'll get Claudio's talk on accelerating TCP in user space social switching. Uh, I, I have shared the link and it's pinned. So you guys, if in case hop in breaks out, you can go and watch the YouTube video, but be sure to have this tab open so that you can participate in the live Q and A. So I'll be uh, beginning with the video now. Hello, thanks for attending this talk. My name is Vlad Leitner. I work for Red Hat. With that said, let's go over slide number three, the, the slide, the agenda slide. Okay, let me go over the agenda to give you an idea on how this talk will develop. So first I will talk about why using the user space data path and then present to you two typical use cases that were the motivation for this work. And then uh, we'll discuss the packet sizes and the shift to the TCP packets. After that, I'm going to present to you the proposed solution, which is the TCP segmentation of load, followed by the, some key implementation details. I hope that these key, uh, these implementation details helps you to understand uh, the sources if you want to check out them and uh, you know navigate through the sources. And then, of course, I uh, will provide some performance numbers comparing with and without TSU and wrap up uh, talking about some limitations in future work. With that said, let's go to the next slide, the user space data path. What is the user space data path? It allows networking packets processing without using the kernel stack. So basically, uh, thanks to DPDK, we can receive packets from the network card directly in user space. Then OVS can process the packet completely in user space and then send out this packet either to a virtual machine or to another physical device. And everything happens completely in user space by passing the kernel stack. But why we want to do that? Well, because processing is small to medium packet sizes, and I'm talking about 64 bytes, uh, and packets of uh, 128 bytes or 256 bytes, and processing them in user space is faster. But how, how can we do this? Well, using uh, TPDK as an edited open this switch, uh, also known as OVS TPDK. Uh, TPDK provides you the drivers to have access to physical devices in completely in user space. And then the open switch, as I explained it, uh, can do all the processing completely in user space and then send out uh, to a virtual machine or to another device. All right. And uh, so where where can we do this? The most common use case is inside of hypervisors to provide connectivity to virtual machines. Okay. With that said, let's go to slide number five. This is the first typical use case I want to present to you. Uh, this is called physical to virtual to physical or PTP. Um, there are some documentations out there or some blogs out there referencing as PTP. So that means physical to virtual to, to physical. And it's basically a hypervisor running OBS DPDK. Uh, uh, connected to a virtual machine and also to a, a network card. So packets come in through the network card, goes uh, through the OVS DPDKs, OVS DPDK and loops back in the virtual machine to the network. So this network could be other hypervisors to build a cloud, for instance. You can have uh, many hypervisors, or you can have, for instance, a traffic generator. Um, pushing packets to measure throughput or to measure latency or jitter. So this is an interesting scenario uh, to measure the, the, the overall solution capacity. Okay. So moving to the next slide is the second uh, typical use case. It's called virtual to virtual or V2V. It's basically one hypervisor running uh, two or more virtual machines and OBS DPDK 
And this obviously PDK again is completely in user space, providing network connectivity to those virtual machines. So one virtual machine sent packets, it goes to obviously PDK and back, and then to the other virtual machine. Okay. The next slide shifted to large payloads. So um, when the user space uh, data path processing, uh, the OVS, the PDK actually, uh, in the beginning we focused a lot in, in the small to medium packets because for a few reasons. Uh, one of them is that the 64 byte packet is used for benchmark purposes. So uh, if you want to compare switches or halters, uh, usually it's done using the performance when using the 64 uh, six four byte packets, and uh, that's because uh, this is the worst situation in the network, right? Uh, you have very little data per packet, and you have headers, so you have a lot of headers to process per second, and not much data. Uh, and also because uh, one of the big pushers for OS DPDK or for fast packet processing is the telcos are the telcos the telcos use they rely on this these uh, small to medium packet sizes but uh, as we saw over the years the environments are not as specific so you might have a, a virtual machine processing signaling for instance which uses uh, small to medium packet sizes but there might be other VMs requiring regular TCP connection. So other sizes matter now. And uh, we want to expand the user space data path to other user cases as well. So I give you an example here, which is terrible as well. If you want to send packets uh, from the virtual machine to a bridge, to the, the bridge port, it will be 860 megabits per second. So for today's standards, uh, this is pretty slow. Uh, so, what's the solution? The proposed solution is already known, it's old, it's uh, called TSO. And uh, TSO basically means uh, instead of the networking stack, spend CPU time, CPU resources, uh, splitting this big chunk of data. Let's say that an application wrote 32K of data to a buffer, instead of uh, spending CPU resources, splitting this 32K into smaller pieces that fits into the network. Uh, it will just send one single packet with 32K uh, of data and let the hardware split if this is going through the, for instance, the physical network card. So that saves a lot of uh, uh, CPU resources in the host and speeds up a lot because uh, we don't have the CPU overhead to process each and every header. We just have one header followed by a big chunk of data. So that's where uh, TSO improves the performance. It's an old technique available in most of the commercial network cards nowadays. Even the one gigabit cards, most of them uh, support a TSO. And uh, this feature is already available in the and the current data path with great results. So we expect to have uh, the same great results in the user space data path. Okay, going to the next slide. Let's talk about the TSO, the TSO support in the network card, in the physical card. So basically, OVS DPDK relies on the DPDK to provide the drivers, and that means we use the pool mode drivers. Uh, most of these pool mode drivers, they, call, they are called PMDs, they already support TSO. So not only the, the network card, the hardware itself uh, supports TSO, but also the PMDs. So, but still, we need to change OVS to enable this feature and also to prepare it better. So again, uh, here I, I give you two key points. One is in the DPDK, the NetDev port config. 
where we set three flags if TSO is enabled in the in this card. Uh, basically, we are setting the TCP TSO uh, flag, also TCP checksum flag, and the IPv4 checksum flag. The checksums are required because when you segment the, the packets, you will create a brand, a brand new uh, packet, and then the checksum needs to be updated. So they are. Uh, if you want to have the TSU enable, you also need to have the checksum enabled. So we've set these flags in the TX mode of load flags and then pass that to the device. Um, uh, and then the PND will automatically will understand TSO packets from now on. But in order to pass these packets, we also need to prepare them. So there is a new function called that FTP a prep harder offload packet, which will um, set some offsets and uh, some header offsets in the packet in order to allow the hardware to do its job. So those were the two key changes in OVS to allow TSO support in the network card. Let's talk about now the support for the host user. So. Uh, OVS connects virtual machine using VHOS user. This is the uh, uh, it's it, it's the driver. It's, it's, it's the interface that connects the virtual machine with OVS DPDK. But different from the physical uh, devices, we don't use the PMD. We OVS uses the VHOS library directly, and that's. What because uh, in the past, uh, the DHOS user PMD wasn't available, so uh, we started using the VHOST library directly, and maybe this will change in the future, but at this point, the support uh, is added on the using the VHOST library directly, okay? But uh, still, it required changes in this VHOST library, which is uh, part of the DPDK project to work with external buffers. So what's the external buffers? Uh, to support SEO, we have pretty much two options. One of them is working with uh, smaller buffers and then chain them one after another, or work with a bigger, a bigger buffer. When we work with the bigger buffer, the advantage is that we don't need to worry about when one buffer is ending and when the buffer is starting. So let's say we want to ship, uh, we want to prepend the fill headers. So we want to ship data a little, uh, or we want to parse headers. We don't need to worry about if the buffer is ending or not. So the solution adopted here is to using is using external buffers, and then this buffer will be at the size uh, required to hold uh, the data of the packet. Okay, and then uh, what else? Uh, it required changes in OVS to negotiate the feature as well, because um, the vehicle's user has two sizes, two sides. One of them. Uh, it might be an older version, for instance, or a newer version. So it needs to negotiate the features to establish a common, a common set of features, and then enable this, uh, enable the feature. Um, the interesting thing, though, is that if the once the feature is enabled and the KMU is configured to allow that, the feature is exposed inside of the virtual machine and enable by default if you are using them. So basically, if you are in the hypervisor and you are configured with your machine and you allow the TSO to happen and you enable on the OBS side, then the Linux running inside of the virtual machine doesn't need to be changed because TSO gets automatically enabled. Um, that's very good for uh, if you need to, uh, you don't need to worry what's going on inside of the virtual machine. So here I give you another two key points. One of them on the left side is the NetF DPDK uh, host client preconfigure. That's where we set one of the flags required, which is the linear buffer support. 
Uh, and that pretty much says to the EOS library that we don't, that OVS does not support chain edit buffers. It's just one linear buffer. And then if the uh, user space TFC is enabled, uh, we will pass this flag called external uh, buffer support. That tells um, the VLOS library um, if it attaches uh, another buffer, a bigger buffer to the packet, then OVS will know how to deal with it. And uh, in the continuation of this function, if the user space TSO is enabled, then um, it's interesting here because the VHOS uh, driver uh, requires us to disable features that we don't support. So instead of enable features that we want to support, we need to disable features that we don't support. So in this case, if the user space TSO is enabled, then we just disable uh, ECN and also UFO. Uh, but if the SEO is not enabled, then we disable the checksum. If you recall the one of the first slides, I mentioned that the checksum is required for TSO and also for uh, uh, the user space, the UDP fragmentation of load. So disabling checksum pretty much disables, uh, disables all the other uh, offloading features. Okay, so it's not much complicated there. Just need to understand that uh, there is a negotiation that's going to happen. You need to enable the Kibu and also uh, set the flags, uh, both flags also, uh, the flags to set, to tell that uh, we want external buffers and also enabling or not disabling the um, TSO. Okay, let's talk about OVS DPDK support now. So basically, there are some changes. Uh, one important change is that the packets above the MQ are now allowed, but only if the egress device has TS2 enabled. So uh, before the change, if the packet is bigger than the MQ, which is a uh, 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 configuration common to the whole to the, all the ports attached to a bridge. Um, this, uh, this packet will be just dropped, right? But now with the TSO, uh, if the egress device has the TSO flag enabled, this packet is allowed because then, of course, the network card will do the work, or the egress device will do the same petition work for us. If you want to check that, there is a generic point at netdev underscore send, which calls netdev send prepare batch, and this function since OVS DPDK works with a batch of packets, it will iterate over the batch, check it packet by packet, uh, if it fits uh, uh, into the network or if the SEO is enabled, otherwise it will drop the packet. Okay? For non DPDK devices, uh, it enables the VTIO underscore net underscore header data structure. So that allows us to exchange information, check some information in TSO type with the kernel. So that uh, pretty much if you want to send packets to a virtual with an app pairs, for instance, we can use that interface to send the information uh, to the kernel. Uh, packets coming from the known DPDK device uh, needs a special handling uh, to copy. So since now we support external buffers, uh, these packets come from uh, using uh, non-DPDK memory, we need to do some special handling that. Uh, if you want details, you can go over the DPDK underscore do underscore DX copy. Okay, and uh, there is no software fallback. What does that mean? It means if the, if the device does not support the SEO, uh, it could have uh, an option in software to do that. So let's say the VM sends a big packet, a TSO packet. This packet goes through the open this switch and it's going to be sent out on the, another device, a physical device that for instance does not support TSO. And then instead of just dropping the packet, we could do the segmentation in software 
and send out the supported packets to the egress device. But that's not what happens today. Uh, there is no software fallback. Uh, but on the other hand, the good thing about using the external buffers and not uh, chained buffers is that there was no changes to core OBS packet handling functions. So uh, functions like to shift uh, bytes, to include headers or to remove headers and things like that, or to parse headers, uh, those functions were not changed. Uh, there is no extra overhead processing packets because of this. So basically you have either a, a buffer of a standard size, uh, which is pretty much MQ plus overhead, or you have a bigger buffer uh, using the external buffer feature. Okay, that said, let's go to the next slide. TSU support overview. So here it gives you built with TSU. Right. That said, let's go to the next slide. So this table shows you our performance sending TCP packets from the virtual machine to a local bridge. For instance, the second line is the uh, VM sending to a local bridge. Uh, default is without TSO, is the default configuration. And uh, so you can see I got uh, three gigabits per second. And with TSO enable, it jumps to 23 gigabits per second. Uh, if you do the ratio there, it's pretty much seven times. Um, in the next slide, we can see the VM sending to a network namespace using the virtual Ethernet pairs. So before I got three gigabits per second, it jumped to 22 gigabits per second, which is also seven times faster. Uh, the interesting case is VM in the same hole. So it's VM to VM, the V2V scenario, jumped from 2.5 to 24 gigabits per second. So that's a nine times faster. And, uh, and also the, the PVP, right, the physical to virtual to physical, so communicating with external host. Uh, in this case, is the VM sending to the external host, so the default uh, performance is 10 gigabits. With TSU enable, it goes to 35 gigabits, so it's uh, three times faster. With external host, using encapsulation, we cannot measure that because it's not supported. Okay, I will talk more about this in the limitations uh, slide. All right, uh, here we have some performance numbers now using VLAN. So it's VM sending to the local bridge over a VLAN. Um, you can see that the numbers are uh, good as as good as the previous slide. So the local bridge is five times, uh, seven times faster. Uh, sending to another virtual machine and the same host is eight times faster and to external host is five times faster, okay? Moving to the next performance slide, now using IPv6 instead of IPv4, uh, sending to the network name space, we jump uh, eight times, sending to another virtual machine and the same host is eight times faster and sending to an external host is four times faster. Just to highlight here that the external host is using the physical uh, network card and that was a 40 gigabit. Uh, card, and uh, which means uh, TSU pretty much reached pretty much uh, reached line eight speed. Okay, so I'm uh, the bottleneck here is the the physical device and not really the, the the software switch. Most probably, if I had a card a faster card, uh, I would get a better performance. I could not see that, I could not prove that because my card was limited to 40 gigabits uh, per second. All right, let's talk about uh, some uh, limitations in future work. First and most important, please check out the documentation. There are details there on how to configure things, how to set up the environment. We try to keep it up to date uh, and also it it contains the limitations. So there is a link in this slide. Um, uh, you can either check the OVS sources or go through that link to read the latest. Uh, 
one interesting thing is that it needs to be enabled at initialization. It's a global configuration, so it affects the whole uh, OVS in user space. And if you want to change that, it requires a restart. So I put that um, the, the reference command uh, for you to enable the feature. Uh, you can change true to false in order to disable that. Um, this command is also in the documentation. But yeah, this here, just in case you want to play with it, uh, it's, um, uh, yeah. So it supports uh, flat and VLAN networks, as I showed to you the, in the performance slides. Um, unfortunately, there is no support for the encapsulation. There are uh, patches posted to the mailing list as we speak to add support for, the, for that. Uh, it's under review, so if you are curious or if you want to test those, provide feedback or anything, you are welcome to do this. Um, yeah, and one thing that I already mentioned and I want to emphasize here is that there is no software fallback at the moment. So if the device does not support SEO and, uh, and it receives or the switch is going to send a TSO packet to it, then yeah, this packet will be dropped. There will be a warning in the logs, of course, but still, um, yeah, it will be interesting to have the software fallback. There is also a proposal in the mailing list. Uh, feel free to check out and again, test and provide feedback. And as future improvements, um, as I said, support encapsulation, VXLAN, GenF, and GRE, those are also available in the most uh, commercial cards out there. So it should not be a problem to enable this in OVS. Also to have the support uh, software fallback, uh, GSO, the generic segmentation of load available in OVS. And um, there is one interesting uh, thing here is that the, user, the OVS user space is used with DPDK. So we could try to leverage the DPDK GSO infrastructure but OVS is also used in uh, BSD environments, so and they don't need to use the PDK. So it would be interesting if the GSO solution would be generic enough to work with uh, in the BSD uh, with or without the PDK, because then it allows uh, user space to work independently of the PDK. And also support TSO per device, not really a global key. Um, basically, uh, we would add uh, a port, for instance, a physical device would come out uh, with TSO enabled because uh, it's interesting to have uh, enabled all the time. And um, but if the card doesn't support that, uh, we would do the fallback in in this in software and it would be transparent to other ports uh, attached to the switch. So we would not need this global key and we could have this option to, you know, um, if for some reason you don't want uh, TS TSO enable on a specific port, you could just go and disable there. This is something we can improve in the future. Well, there are other TCP improvements uh, related TCP improvements, like for instance, the partial and the full hardware offloading. The partial hardware offloading works like this. Instead of um, leaving to the software, uh, the switch software to process the headers and then find the specific flow, uh, processing headers is an expensive, uh, an, an expensive operation. So we could uh, what happens in the partial hardware offloading is that the hardware provides to us a hash that is based on the network headers. And the only thing that the software needs to do is to take that hash and match to a flow. So it is it cuts part of the expensive operation for processing packets. That gives you like a, a uh, some significant performance improvement. I'm talking about 30%. It could be even more. And the partial hardware offloading is being expanded to also do to also execute some of the actions in the hardware. So uh, let's say that you want to do to do the, just some modifications in the packet, 
And if the hardware supports that, then it could do these partial modifications in the hardware. This is something that's being uh, proposed in the mailing list. And there is also the full hardware offloading where um, the switch, the, the software configures the hardware to match on specific headers and then do uh, some actions like, for instance, packets coming from a specific IP address going to another specific uh, IP address needs to be sent out to a particular VM. You, uh, the software can just uh, configure that in the hardware and the hardware will receive the packet, do everything needed and send out to the virtual machine without any intervention from the, the hypervisor. So it saves, uh, it's pretty much a, a hardware, a direct hardware uh, connection from the physical network card to the virtual machine. And also there were some uh, interesting improvements with batching, uh, specifically I'm talking about the, um, the, the interface to the non-DPDK uh, devices like virtual internet pairs um, and tap devices, um, things like using syscalls that allows multiple packets to be sent out uh, per syscall, instead of doing one syscall per packet, which is, uh, is low, we batch the packets and send all and send uh, like up to a 32 packets in one syscall. That greatly improved the performance over time. Okay, that's what I had to present for this talk. Thanks a lot. Thank you for uh, attending. Thank you so much for the talk, Flavio. Um, if there are any questions for Flavio, please put them in the chat and we will field it to him. Okay, first question. How can we debug network segmentation issues with T when TSO is enabled or even see which devices are using TSO? Are there any insights into the segmentation engine from the host side? So there is uh, the segmentation is happening at the network card. So uh, the when the packet comes in from the virtual machine, you will see the whole packet. So if you use OVS TCP dump, you will be able to see the whole packet. Uh, but the segmentation itself only happens in, in the in the hardware. If you are sending this packet back to the kernel, for instance, then the, there is no segmentation at all. Even if you are sending to another virtual machine. There is no segmentation. The, the same packet that came in, it will be sent out to the other device. Uh, which devices are using TSO? Basically today is all or all or nothing. So if you enable the TSO, you, uh, we assume that every device uh, supports TSO. But if in the case of a hardware or, uh, yeah, in the case of a hardware that does not support TSO, then there will be a warning flag in the vSwitch log. And I guess the last question I already answered, but uh, yeah, maybe I missed something. Any more questions? All right, so TSO is experimental yet. Um, as you can see, there are many things to improve there. Uh, it was added in OVS 2.13. The partial hardware offload is a little bit older. It, it got added first in the OVS 2.10. It's still experimental. But yeah, those are very interesting technologies. If you, if you want to uh, report feedbacks, test, or help us, uh, we will appreciate that for sure. question does it work transparently for pack yes you should be able to see the packet as is as it is flowing in the OVS okay let's give it a few seconds in case people are typing other questions <laughs>
Okay, doesn't look like there is any more right now. Uh, if you would like to continue the conversation with Flavio, feel free to directly message him on Hopin, or we have breakout rooms under the Expo tab for the system engineering track. So you can hang out there, share audio video and have discussions. Thank you so much once again, Flavio. Thank you. Yep. Bye.